Hi, and thank you for watching this video. I'm sure you'll be amazed and blessed by the information contained in this one. I've just come across more confirmation regarding the timing that the enemy has provided in their plan that they have laid out in plain sight. In the latest video I have shared, you would have seen that I have pointed out how the closing scene in the iPad Go 2 animation marks the 9th or 10th of December, coinciding with the conclusion of the Feast of Dedication. Now on this past Saturday evening, I asked the Lord if He would give me a passage from His Word to either confirm or point out as false the understanding of this timing and whether it is indeed related to His return for us, and He gave me this passage. For He saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. This morning when I was driving to work, I asked our Heavenly Father again to please confirm the timing for me so that I can provide encouragement to those who are watching for our Lord's return and who have been waiting patiently without seeing the blessed hope and who are becoming weary. He then pointed me to another instance in which we see the enemy laying out their plan in plain sight and associating it with a date, but this time it was The Economist magazine with the title The World in 2017. I have covered this in more detail in an earlier video. This magazine, which is owned by the Rothschilds, also has a heavenly alignment that was depicted in one of the cards displayed on the cover. I decided to check this again in Stellarium to see if it has anything to do with Hanukkah this year, and lo and behold, the alignment as shown in this image lines up with a very interesting date. Have a look at this. The alignment shown in this card matches the 1st of December 2018, marking the day before the start of the Feast of Dedication, and the timing at which Greenblatt stated that the details of the deal of the century would be revealed. So we now have two instances in which both the start and the conclusion of the Feast of Dedication have been marked as very significant dates by those who are planning to bring the Antichrist and a new world order onto the world stage. Now there are many that will outright reject this information, given the evil sources where this originated from. But we have to remember that the Bible tells us the following. The thief cometh not but for to steal, and to kill, and to destroy. I am come that they might have life, and that they might have it more abundantly. But know this, that if the goodman of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. We also see how our Heavenly Father allows us to know the enemy's plan from Scripture, where Elisha told the king of Israel what the king of Syria's plan was before he carried it out. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel, and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warned him of, and saved himself there not once or twice. Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants, and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king. But Elisha the prophet that is in Israel telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. We also know that scripture states that God will do nothing until he revealed his secrets to his prophets. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. If we are in a position to discover the timing at which the thief plans to break into the house, especially when we are given access to view his notebook, as it would seem from the evidence presented, then we are in a very good position to watch, even if it turns out to be a false alarm. By this time our enemy has a very clear understanding of when the tribulation will start, based on the timing 
of the signs that our Heavenly Father scheduled in the heavens, similar to the three-hour eclipse that occurred during Jesus' crucifixion. The next sign that will be given to the world will mark the announcement of the second coming of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who will return to earth after those who will lay down their lives for Christ have all been killed, and to then take back the kingdoms of the world from Satan. This sign will be given to and will be seen by those who will remain behind, whether they believe that Jesus is the Son of God or not. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Those who are believers in Jesus will be mourning due to the fact that they did not heed the warnings provided to them by those who will no longer be found on earth, but who will enjoy that which Jesus told us he was going to prepare for us. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. I am convinced that this sign will involve a major collision between Jupiter and a foreign celestial object called Nibiru or Planet X, as shown in earlier videos. We cannot observe Jupiter from the Earth at this moment, as it is currently positioned behind the Sun, and this may certainly play a role in the great destruction that will come over the Earth from a celestial point of view, and also hinted at by the pulses seen at the end of the I Bet Go 2 movie that emanate from the Sun. This may very well be gravity and electromagnetic waves that may be caused by this collision that may have a major impact on the Earth. This is just my opinion, but there are certainly many passages in the Word of God that point us to a collision with Jupiter which will eventually lead to the destruction of the Earth. As always, I base this on the understanding that I obtain from God's Word and I want to clearly state that this is just a possibility that I see and that I can certainly be wrong about it. We also have to consider that on the Hebrew calendar, the date that is marked by this card or December 1st in 2018 would line up with the 23rd day of the 9th month on the Hebrew calendar. The 923 date has been seen in so many movies and series and has mostly been associated with the Gregorian calendar, but considering the pointers to this window of time that covers the Feast of Dedication this year, and the fact that 923 is linked to the alignment in this card, should be setting off a number of alarms for those who are watching. Those who serve the God of this world, Satan, would certainly be considered wiser than the children of God, given that they are used by our enemy to make preparations for the deception that our adversary will use to deceive those that will remain behind once the rapture occurred. And the Lord commended the unjust steward because he had done wisely, for the children of this world are in their generation wiser than the children of light. This also, in my opinion, specifically involves the announcement of Trump's peace plan through which Israel will most likely be asked to agree to part God's land and to break God's everlasting covenant that he made with Abraham. Our Heavenly Father also tells us that we are not in darkness, and that that day will not catch us unawares. But ye brethren are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. I hope that this additional information regarding the dates that would seem to carry great significance for those pulling the strings behind the scenes,
and that are dates that we will very soon encounter will encourage those of you who have been eagerly awaiting our bridegroom's return. I know that there are many who feel that they are just about ready to give up, but be steadfast, as even though the bridegroom tarries, he will certainly come for those who remain expectant of his return, even when they are suffering the scorn of others, and are dealing with a heart that is growing sick because of the delays. Hope deferred maketh a heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. This time frame has now been confirmed to me in four different instances over the past week, and even though I know and understand that my interpretation of the information could still be incorrect, and that all of this may simply be a coincidence or referring to alignments in the heavens that may be encountered in some future year, I know that this window of time, from December 1st to December 10th, carries great significance for our enemy and forms part of a plan, and it will certainly be a period during which I will be on the highest alert for this year, and will be ready and expecting to meet my Lord in the air, and I hope you will be expecting Him and watching for His return too. 2018 is the only year in which the alignments shown in the animation and on the Hermit card marks the start and finish of Hanukkah. Last year this did not happen, and next year it won't happen either. Remember, if we remain expectant of our bridegroom's return, and if we are continually watching, then there is no way in which we will be caught by surprise. These dates that our Heavenly Father has now allowed us to see, and which are clearly marked by our enemy, carry much significance viewed from many perspectives. This could very well be the time during which the Age of Grace ends and the Tribulation starts, or as Trump said, when the calm before the storm could end. You guys know what this represents? Well, I don't remember just the calm before the storm. What's the storm? Could be the calm, the calm before the storm. What storm is We have the world's great military people in this room, I will tell you that. And uh, we're not great in it. Thank you all for coming. Thank you. What storm, Mr. President? You'll find out. <laughs> Give us a hint on your hands. Thank you. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank Mr. You. President, what did you mean by calm before the storm yesterday? Thank what did you, you mean by that? You'll find out. <laughs> we'll find out. Be ready because you have now been given important information related to the timing of which great destruction may come over the earth. And if you see that the deal of the century is about to be announced between the window of December 1st to December 10th, then the chances of this understanding being correct is almost assured, and we could very well see 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 fulfilled before our eyes. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. If you decide to simply ignore this warning because of what you have been told by others, or because of the doctrine that you have, or simply because you believe the timing is off, or that it does not line up with what you know it should be, then please consider this information carefully, even though this warning could turn out to be just another false alarm. Better to be prepared and to be found watching than to have the thief break into your house when you are confident that it could not happen at that time. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord when he cometh shall find watching. Verily I say unto you that he shall gird himself and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. If you have not yet accepted Jesus Christ as your Savior, there is no better day than today to do so. The Bible tells us the following, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him 
shall not be ashamed. If you have not done this yet, you can do this right now and become a child of God, who is born of God's Spirit. Jesus paid the price for your sins on the cross and is giving you the opportunity to become a child of God as a free gift to you. All that you have to do is to realize that you are a sinner in need of a Savior. Confess your sinfulness to the Lord and understand that only the blood of Jesus can cleanse you of your sins. And He has already done it for you. All that you have to do is to accept this wonderful gift through faith and to thank Him for His love towards you. Then you can look forward with excitement to meeting our Redeemer in the air very soon. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you, and may He make His face shine upon you, and may He give you peace that transcends all understanding. Until next time, or until we meet our Savior and each other in the air, God bless.